All right. Hi, welcome to Leveraging Labor Analytics to Make Workforce Decisions. Uh, if you're on Twitter, our marketing team will be live tweeting throughout the webinar using the hashtag labor data, or you can follow us directly at net time. Also, just so you're aware, this webinar is being recorded and we'll email it out to all of our registrants. So if you need to step away or you have colleagues who want to view the webinar later, we'll have that ready for you tomorrow. My name is Jennifer Spencer. I'm the Director of Marketing here at NetTime Solutions. And I'm also joined today by Ruli Garcia, who is one of our technical sales engineers here at NetTime. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me, Jennifer, and thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day today. So in today's webinar, first we're going to take a look at exactly how employees are spending their time and what common distractions are keeping us from being more productive throughout the workday. Then we'll talk about project management and how time and attendance with the right functionality can really help managers better understand exactly how their human capital resources are being spent within your organization. We'll look at scheduling and the opportunity we have to harvest labor data and use it to create future schedules that best fit the needs of a company. And we'll show you what scheduling tools we have available within Stratus Time. Finally, we'll dive into overtime and PTO usage and explain how, from an employee engagement perspective, these two items can be very similar. And Ruli is going to show us how we can use real-time reporting to reduce overtime and encourage appropriate PTO usage with the help of sophisticated analytics and easy-to-use alerts. The webinar will then close with a Q&A session, and as questions arise, you can go ahead and enter them right into the control panel of GoToWebinar, and we'll do our best to answer all of your questions at the very end. So <clears throat> in nearly any company of every size, total human capital costs remain the single greatest organizational expense with payroll costs that are averaging nearly 70% of total operating expenses, it's really important to know if your workforce is your most valuable asset or merely your greatest expense. So how might your hiring decisions, your employee scheduling methodologies, and strategic growth plans be impacted if you had the ability to analyze fine details of your labor data year over year, month over month, and by location and department? So let's look at how workers actually spend their day. Unfortunately, only 88% of the day is spent actually working. So studies have shown that employees spend eight hours per week searching for information that they need in order to do their jobs effectively. And employees spend 13 hours per week just dealing with their email. So that's 28% of their work week. What this shows us is that time spent in the office does not always translate to productivity. There also are quite a few distractions throughout the workday that keep us from our jobs. Um, in fact, workers spend an average of an hour a day on personal tasks, um, things that you know probably you fall victim to as well, like reading news websites, checking your social media, socializing with their colleagues, searching for new jobs, um, which actually does happen while people are at work, taking smoking breaks, placing phone calls to their partners or spouses or their friends, making hot drinks like tea or coffee, text messaging and instant messaging, um, since we have those technology tools so readily available to us at all times, and eating snacks and making food in the office. So maybe you don't want to put your employees on total lockdown and prohibit them from taking these small breaks throughout the day. But if you do manage a group of people, then at some point you probably thought, you know, my employees seem incredibly busy all day long, but I'm honestly not sure what they're specifically working on. Or I'm not sure if my team has the capacity to take on yet another project. And really, how do you know? I mean, most departments have weekly meetings where team members check in and provide feedback on what's happening in the week and the month ahead. And some even use project management software to organize all of the moving parts that go into successfully completing a job. But how do you, as the overseeing manager, <clears throat> really understand where your team is spending their time? And is there anything that you can do to increase your team's productivity and affect your company's profits? 
So <clears throat> while time clocks have largely been used for hourly employees who are clocking in and out as they appear for work, take breaks, and depart for the day, time and attendance software allows management teams to really analyze the time spent by all levels of employees within any given time frame. And this valuable information is providing executive level decision makers with the proper data to make strategic workforce decisions. So as a manager of a large department, I previously um, was in a position where I had full-time salaried employees tell me that they could not possibly add anything else to their workloads. And I could see that these individuals were working well over 40 hours each week. Um, they had always prepared to be extremely busy and on task, and they frequently came into the office or work from home on the weekends just to keep up with their duties. It would be easy to explain um, to my superior that our team was at our maximum capacity and the work would either have to be outsourced, turned down, or that we would need to hire additional employees. But here's where a sophisticated time and attendance system can take perceptions and actually flesh them out with data-driven facts. And in fact, Willie's going to share some of the project management capabilities that we have in Stratus Time um, that really showcase labor allocation reporting that can be extremely beneficial for workforce decision making. You can use quick reporting widgets in our system to quickly allow you to drill through your company labor levels. Customized reporting widgets are available through the manager's dashboard and allow you to drill through your company labor levels. For example, the following image shows the hours dedicated to my two locations. By clicking on one of those locations, I can then see the hours allotted to my next labor level, which in this case is department. Stratus Time will allow you to quickly click through your company's labor levels all the way down to an individual employee. No matter which method you're keeping time, whether it's through a time clock, electronic time sheet, or mobile device, you can track time to labor levels using any of those methods. Um, and as a manager, what I, what I love about um, this drill down data feature is that it's right in my manager dashboard, um, so I don't have to initiate any kind of complex report or anything. I just have it right there at my fingertips as soon as I, as soon as I sign on to my screen. Um, <clears throat> I like to actually transition and, and share a little bit of a real-world scheduling, um, labor scheduling dilemma that may resonate with many of you today. Um, at a recent event, we met an HR manager uh, who works for a city, and she was struggling with the scheduling of firefighters and police officers. And she found they were constantly juggling the scheduling parameters that were provided by the firefighters and the police officers' unions, um, the necessary hours they needed for on-site maintenance and critical paperwork, and then the hours for emergency response, of course, uh, and then the necessary time off that these professionals really need to both rest and recuperate, as well as take vacations with their family and their loved ones. And what she desired was a simple way to access work hours, including specific project hours, one, two, even three years back to identify trends that would aid in forecasting for creating schedules in the future. You know, as you know, there are some industries that clearly have a seasonality to them. So, for example, if you run a ski resort, your workforce needs are obviously going to be different in the winter than they are in the summer. And if your company specializes in school supplies, you can always anticipate a surge in orders at the start of the school year, right around Labor Day. But in many cases, there's an often undocumented flow that doesn't necessarily coincide with the falling of leaves. And unfortunately, much of that workflow intelligence can be categorized as institutional knowledge that, when not documented properly, can disappear as employees move on to other opportunities. So tracking time consistently and dele delineating work type can provide you with valuable labor analytics that you can use to help you make better employee scheduling decisions. So let's take a look at some of those analytics. Ruli is going to show us scheduling reporting and other scheduling tools that would be beneficial to our friend who is scheduling firefighters and police officers for her city. You can use Stratus Time Labor Analytics to compare your scheduled hours to the amount of hours your employees are actually working. So if you look at the top two images here, I have one showing me my day-to-day -day hours so I can see you know, when my employees are scheduled and how they're comparing to that actual schedule. If you look at the image to the right, we actually have the ability to quickly scroll through different time periods. And you can see I'm currently looking at 
my current month versus my previous month. But that is a dynamic widget that you can change those different time periods. And for all of you aesthetic people out there, you can even change the colors that that piece is reporting back into. So keep in mind, if you have data over years through the Stratus Time system, how you can look back at certain months, certain weeks, certain periods of time, and understand how you can better staff your company. The next image you're looking at is our visual scheduler. It's another great tool to quickly see your coverage. Now, the scheduling feature is very easy to adjust. If you happen to look at your visual scheduler and see that you are short in a certain department, it takes a matter of clicks to duplicate a, a shift to another employee, to move a shift to a different employee, or to quickly slide uh, an employee's shift to adjust them to be there for different hours. Great, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. <clears throat> Um, and I want to ask, you know, how many employees do you know who consistently work overtime? And more importantly, do you know why they're working those extra hours? So sometimes it's the employer's choice. So let's take this situation for example. Let's say the amount of work on an employee's plate has increased due to layoffs. The manager may consider it more effective in the short term to allow the employee to work overtime in lieu of hiring another employee to balance the amount of work. In other cases, it might be the employee's choice to work extra overtime. Say the employee holds a specific skill set or a program or a piece of equipment that no one else possesses or has access to. So his territorial behavior not only extends his work hours, but that also hinders his colleagues' development by denying them cross-functional training. It's also possible that the employee does not actually need the extra hours to complete her responsibilities, but instead she works leisurely to extend her hours and gain that extra pay. And then of course there is the coveted, diligent, and hardworking employee who genuinely wants to do right by the company, and so that person works overtime just to get the job done. The trouble is that the effects of working overtime are generally not favorable. Many people tend to equate more hours worked with higher productivity, but once an employee surpasses a certain number of hours, the amount of work produced can actually turn into a negative situation. Whether the employee is rushing to finish his work or exhausted from the long hours, he's going to begin to make errors and the quality of his work is going to decrease. The lack of time away from work can mean less time with family, fewer hours of sleep, and an increase in stress all contributing to an increase in absenteeism. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, overtime is associated with poor perceived general health, increased injury rates, more illnesses, or increased mortality. And essentially all of these effects lead to one all-inclusive effect, employee burnout. And another contributor to employee burnout is, the f is failing to use vacation hours or PTO. The lack of a break from work can cause stress, a decrease in productivity, a poor attitude, and it can diminish creativity and innovation. So as a manager, how can you support the use of vacation hours? Well, you can start by understanding which locations and departments are using or are not using their PTO, and then use this information to identify trends in certain positions. So maybe you find that your support team's turnover is high and their PTO banks are completely full. Could it be the team is understaffed? One employee might be afraid of taking time off, that that will cause him to appear to be lazy. And another might want to take a day off at short notice, but is unable to do so because she must request her time off weeks in advance. Or maybe the employee has the option to cash out PTO and sees a higher value in the money than in time away from the office. Whatever the reason, not taking time off is detrimental for both the employee and your business. So it's important as a manager to encourage your employees to take time away from work, and approving an employee's time to refresh is so imperative for a productive and an innovative team. Interacting with other people outside your workplace, enjoying new experiences, pursuing personal interests, this all allows your employees to do their best upon their best work upon returning. So you can encourage your employees and you should encourage yourself to take your time off because it's going to be better for everyone in the long run. So Ruli is going to share with us some of the overtime and PTO reporting features that, in, that are in Stratus Time so, to help you better support your employees. 
Thank you. So with Stratus time, we can use our reporting to not just see overtime against your bottom line, but in fact use our labor analytics to view how overtime may be affecting your departments or individual staff members. Do you have certain departments or locations within your company that are being overworked or overstressed? So in the example above, I have my time broken out by different departments as well as my different locations. And as you can see, it looks like my California marketing department is quite overworked compared to the rest of my staff. What is that doing to my employees' productivity? And are they having enough time to get their work done in a proper manner, not just spending time in the office? If you're looking at the next slide, I'm using that same information and I'm actually comparing my, uh, my different departments paid time off that they currently have. Now, looking at these two different departments, it's very clear that one department is using a lot more of their PTO than another. Using your labor analytics, you'll be able to figure out the effect that's having on your staff. Are they overworked? Are they not having enough time to refresh? And is that affecting the, pro the productivity within your company? Um, <clears throat> we have a saying here around our office. Um, that compares time and money to toothpaste. Uh, once you squeeze the toothpaste, toothpaste out of the tube, it's nearly impossible to get it back in. And if you've ever had to sign off on thousands of dollars in overtime, you know what we mean. Once the time is spent, you can't get it back. And as you know, time is more expensive than toothpaste. And that's why we have the tools that we do for time and labor management. So we've covered a variety, uh, a variety of data points, but the thing is data is just data unless you're able to apply it. Uh, we find that alerts are extremely beneficial. And with the alerts module that we have in Stratus Time, you can quickly gain insight into the areas that are most important to you in an appealing and intuitive approach. Our goal is to present you with the right data at the right time before money and productivity are lost. So here are some of the common alerts that we see across many industries. Um, you might have an alert for when an employee is nearing overtime, for when an employee is absent or misses a punch, comes in early, or skips a meal, or for when an employee's certification is nearing expiration. And just one extra piece I'd like to add to that, we actually can link those alerts to uh, text messages as well as emails as well. So we can include a couple different uh, touching points to get in front of those managers and supervisors and make sure in fact that they are getting the information they need in real time. So you know we know that you don't have time to you don't have time to analyze labor data all day long. <clears throat> That's why the tools that we have available are intuitive, they're easy to use, and they're focused on helping you make critical workforce decisions that will increase your overall productivity by allocating your labor resources appropriately. So now we'd like to open the webinar up for any questions that you might have. And if you haven't done so already, you can go ahead and enter those questions right into GoToWebinar's control panel um, in the question field, and we'll do our best to answer them as they come in. Okay, the first question we have is actually really more about pricing, asking if we have contracts and how does pricing work. Um, so our clients don't um, have to sign any long-term contracts. Um, it's actually from one month to the other. And um, the Stratus Time system is, is billed on a per employee, per month basis. So really you're only paying for um, those people in your organization who are using the system. And if you'd like more specific pricing information, uh, it really uh, it changes based on your, the modules that you add and what the needs are for your organization. Uh, we can follow up with you after, after the webinar and put you in touch with someone from our sales department. And the next question is about collecting, collecting employee data. Do you use time clocks, time sheets? How do you collect data? Um, I'm going to pass this over to Ruli. He can talk about the different data collection options that we have. We have a number of different methods we can collect time. And the nice thing about Stratus Time is you can actually have different groups of employees within your organization keeping time in different methods. Now, whether that's through a physical time clock, through electronic time sheets, through a mobile device like a uh, smartphone or tablet, or through our new kiosk feature uh, throughout your office. 
And that, that kiosk feature um, that really just mentioned, we just announced that today. We just sent out a press release and there's an email going out um, to, to everyone later today about, about that, new, that new technology. And if you have specific questions about that, please, please let us know after the webinar. Um, the last, the next question, I'm sorry, is how many different uh, labor levels can the system accommodate and can you report off of those levels? So that, that question is regarding those different labor levels really was showing us where he had uh, location and department. Um, so do we have other, other labor, lo labor levels that we can report off of? And I pass it back over to Ruli for that. The first thing to keep in mind here is that all labor levels are definable by you. So don't think that you have to be stuck with location, department, etc. We can actually have up to 15 different labor levels. I know that sounds like a lot, but we can accommodate it. We can also accommodate an infinite number of pieces within those labor levels. Now, it's very easy to assign those different pieces to employees so they can have access to log in their time to those pieces. At, at the same time, you have the ability to future date different pieces. If you have uh, a new piece you add to your system today, but it's not gonna go into effect till next month, you can uh, effective date that to not go into place until that time, and so your employees will not see that reflected until the date you designate that to take place. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any other questions coming in, um, but if any questions do come up, um, you can absolutely contact us at info at nettimesolutions.com. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you for joining NetTime Solutions for this webinar on leveraging labor analytics to make workforce decisions. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to email all registrants a recording of this webinar, and we'll also post it on our website and on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about Stratus Time and see if it's the right automated time and attendance system for your organization, you can give us a call at 1-800-561-6366 or you can visit us online at nettimesolutions.com to request a customized demonstration. Again, thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day.